I know. It's not Monday. It's Tuesday. For your information, I recorded it on Monday. I just didn't post it on Monday. Um, welcome to a Mighty Mini Monday on Tuesday. Welcome. Today's episode is all about GPUs. Let's get into it. channel all right so gpus in a kubernetes cluster so i wanted to talk briefly on this because in the classical sense you would do it differently a kubernetes cluster does containers and pods and one of the problems with this is you have to be able to schedule your hardware for containers and pods not for the individual servers so a classic example is you have two workloads that require a GPU and you have a single machine with a single GPU. They can't both be scheduled on that same machine. It only has one GPU. So the, the scheduler needs to understand the resource of the GPU. And this is where device plugins come into play. But this doesn't really, device plugins itself doesn't really solve the entire problem because not only do you need to be able to schedule it, but you need to install the drivers because the NVIDIA drivers need to be installed on that node. And then not only do you need to be able to install the drivers, but classically this needs to be done in the container. And that's only the start of your problems. Which nodes do you do this on? How do you know if there's a um, if there's a GPU? So very easily, uh, the way you would do this manually, and I don't recommend the manual process except as a learning experience. And there are some slight edge cases where you would not want to use the GPU operator. Uh, and uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to use it because if the the node doesn't have access to the the GPU anymore, and if that's a requirement, or if you're using multiple management styles, so it's not just Kubernetes managing the node, this could cause problems and a reason why you wouldn't want to use it. But I think you want to use it unless if you absolutely can't. Anyhow, if you wanted to do it in a classical sense, you would, for your distribution, install whatever NVIDIA drivers are supported for your system, hopefully the latest CUDA drivers possible. And after you were done installing that, you would need to then expose that to a container that was running and you could use the OCI hooks for cryo and you could use, um, you could just start up the NVIDIA container um, with the correct proper Docker command if you're using Docker um, or container D. And uh, that would work fairly well, but it comes at a cost. You have to start containers with special flags or you have to install the OCI hooks on every single machine with GPUs. And the last thing is you have to install and manage uh, the NVIDIA drivers on every single machine. This is a huge overhead. So this is where the uh, the GPU operator comes into play. And it does some things a little bit differently. And it does some things in an interesting way that you might not expect because in the end, the drivers don't actually ever get installed on the node. So the first thing that you have to understand is daemon sets. And again, this is something I've been wanting to make a video on and I will make a video on. But daemon sets are, Think of it as a pod that's run on every machine. It's almost like a static pod manifest, but it can be controlled by the daemon set controller. Um, whereas a static pod manifest uh, can't actually be controlled. It's just files written to a fancy folder, not even a fancy directory. It's just a directory, you write a file to it and it will make a pod off of it. Um, so daemon sets don't have to run on every node. Classically, they run on every single node. 
but they don't have to be. Um, that's key to keep in mind when thinking about how this all works. But the GPU operator does a couple things. First, when a node joins, it installs the first, joins the cluster, or when you first install it, and it does this on each node, it installs a first daemon set. And this one actually gets installed on every single one. So the first daemon set, what it does is it basically goes through and labels nodes that it finds GPU hardware on. So it, it uses the PCI and it finds GPUs. Once it finds all the GPUs, it labels those nodes. So it says this node has a GPU and it puts a label. It puts this label. The next thing that it does, and this is really where the magic comes into play, is it, on every node that it uh, ha has labeled, on every node that's labeled, it installs another daemon set. Now, it only installs this daemon set on nodes with the label. And this is the driver daemon set. And this is really the cool thing, is their drivers are in a container. and. Now, exactly how this works, I don't know because this code is not open source and I don't work for NVIDIA. So I, I can't actually explain exactly how this works. I can go into some videos on a, how it can work and some of it's like the OCI hooks. And I'm assuming they do something like that. And I think that it would be a fun, maybe even series of videos to do something like this. Um, ourselves, uh, maybe with some open source drivers. Uh, so anyways, but I can't tell you exactly how they do it. I can only speculate. So that is the second container. It's a driver container that exposes the drivers to all the other containers running on that node. And that's pretty much it. The second or the third daemon set that's installed is just the device drivers. Um, so the device plugin, the Kubernetes device plugin, and that, you know, allows those nodes to be scheduled as GPUs um, or a node could have four GPUs and it would have the device plugin would say I have four. So now it knows that, you know, node A has four Tesla T4s that it can schedule. So this is the very basics of the GPU operator. And it does this for every node that joins and leaves the cluster. It's a fairly simple but uh, advanced solution to the issue. And this allows you to not worry about your hardware that's running in your Kubernetes cluster. You can add and scale clusters of GPUs quickly and easily without a whole lot of management of it. This also allows you to keep your drivers up to date with the most securest ones easily without needing to actually go to the machine. I actually think that this is the new way of doing drivers in your Kubernetes cluster because it allows you to containerize your drivers and provide it in a way that can be updated and managed at a Kubernetes level. No longer do you need a separate way to manage drivers for your cluster because it's right there. Now, obviously there are base packages installed in your OS and I'm not saying all of that goes away, but maybe we some more drivers, some more drivers like GPUs can be done in a way like this and would reduce some of that overhead. Anyways, I just thought that this was an interesting topic, would be great for a Mighty Mini Monday on Tuesday. And I hope that all of you have a fantastic rest of your week. If you liked this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you really didn't like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stick around and see if these videos get any better for science.